guys. Sorry, uh, welcome to this Biz Bestie interview. And today I have the amazing Emma Hellier. Emma is one of the business owners of Finance Architects Australia, and she can help you with all things finance. So she's really a one-stop shop for anything that you need, whether you're looking for a mortgage or to refinance your property, or perhaps you're looking at expanding your business and you're needing a bit of extra help with that. Maybe you want to have a greater cash injection now to accelerate your business growth. Em is the gal to have a chat to. And today we're going to learn a whole lot more about her. And so... I'm sure you already know me by now, but I'm Renee Kaz, the founder of the Inspired Women Group, and I created this community to really bring female business owners together and to help connect, collaborate, and support one another's success. And so the Biz Best interview series is really all about that, and that's why we have Emma with us today, so she can tell us a bit about her biz and how she can help us. So, Emma, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome to have you here. Now, tell us a bit about your business because I know I gave a little recap, but I'm sure you can uh, probably explain a bit better than I can. You did very well. So me and Natalie, that's my business partner, are an independent mortgage and finance broker firm. So basically, we work with our customers to find them the best solutions from the banks and we make the process easy and seamless. Beautiful. That sounds fantastic. When did you guys launch? So we started just over 18 months ago. So we've worked in banks. I, I worked in the banks for 10 years, both here and in the UK. And Natalie's worked in the banks for over 14 years. And we just kind of got a bit disheartened working with one bank, one product, one policy. It just seemed like if we couldn't help someone, then somebody down the road could. It, it was just really disappointing. So we took the leap of faith and decided to start our own firm so we could really help people we and now we've got so many options that we can sort of fit tailor the product to suit the customer rather than making them fit the one product that we had to offer at the bank so that's the most important thing for us yeah a customer driven solution rather than a business driven solution if this is what we've got these are our offerings you're going to have to fit that it's like well no that might and not you what works and you either fit or you don't. So it's uh, we, we haven't got appetite for that this week, but I know somebody down the road who does. And, and then we just kind of got a bit tired of that, whereas now we don't have that and we can really do what's best for our customers, yeah. which is exciting. That is very good. I think that's how businesses need to be in terms of, you know, and, and that's what most often you'll see. A successful business is one that's launched off the back of, you know, they're seeing something, a, a problem in the marketplace, usually it's something that's annoyed them or frustrated them, and then they've created a solution around that. So rather than going, oh, I'm sick of this or I'm sick of that or I wish someone had created this, it's like, well, go create it. Go create that yeah. solution. That's what people really, really want. So brilliant. I love that you guys have done that. So what I'd love to know, and this is something that I'm sort of touching on through this series, is because <laughs> hindsight's amazing. It'd be brilliant if, you know, when you had all that information and knowledge now from all the lessons we've learned throughout our business journey to have made it much easier from the beginning. But um, I'd love to know from you, you know, what would be something or a few things that you wish you knew when you started out that might have made your journey a bit easier? I think there's a few men that were talking about this today. I think we were quite naive when we went into business about all the different hats that you have to wear. It was kind of we're really good at what we do and we kind of thought that that was enough to sort of get started and go I, I wish we'd planned more I think there's having a business plan is one thing but actually sitting down reviewing it making sure that it's relevant that it's going to work for you so I think you know planning your marketing your ideal customer we want to help everyone and that doesn't really work in the world of marketing so you know it would be nice to have really in the beginning defined who we ideally want to work with and where that person might be and how we can get to them a bit easier as well. And I think Let's just, just support. unpack those a bit more. I mean, I love yep. that, that whole idea of planning and planning out your marketing more. You know, one thing I was very fortunate, my best friend, he's sort of six months ahead of me in business and he'd left his corporate job six months before I left mine. And I was like, oh, you know, I've got to create my business plan. I've got to do all these things before I quit my job. And he's like, well, yeah, that's cool. Just remember that, you know, what you launch your business as or like you'll have your business plan but however things look or what you think it's going to be it'll be very different within 30 days of actually running your business and a business plan is not a static document of okay it's done and now i just follow this 
it's a living document and that keeps getting updated regularly because as things happen, you know, and you need to be customer focused. By being customer focused, it means you're going to have to pivot. You're going to have to make changes according to what the market wants, not what you think the market wants. And so I think that's... Absolutely. What, and I think... Oh, sorry. Go on. No, no, you go. What is it that you guys do in terms of your planning? Like, do you have, do you set aside, say, once a quarter or once a month, do you set aside specific days to work on specific planning within your business? Once a month minimum for us. And, and I think within your planning is also your cash flow. And I think it's important to be realistic with that as well. I think it's nice to say, I really want this, but how quickly is the business going to come in? Is that realistic? What does that look like? So probably for marketing, I do that every couple of weeks. But for for business and actually sitting down where we're going to do once a month minimum, we sort of plan and see what's working, what's not working. And I completely agree. Where we started is not where we are now. <laughs> yeah, it is very different. So do you guys, because it is the two of you running it together, do you have really separate roles in terms of you focus more on the marketing and Nat does other stuff. So it's like you're, there's one centre of control for certain things. Absolutely. I think we've naturally gravitated towards our strengths within the business, which I think is really important in businesses playing to your strengths. So um, Nat looks after a lot of the processes, the operations and the finance, and I do a lot of the marketing and things like that. So we, we're both across everything and when we meet, We generally, we work in an office two days a week now, which is awesome. So we can sit together and really go, hey, this is where the finances are. And we're always on top of what's going on, what's the workflow, what's the pipeline. So we're both very much across that, but it just might be different people who fill in the the process of the spreadsheets that we've got to monitor it. Yeah, so she's more like the CFO, you're more the CMO, but you're both like joint CEO. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How's everything? (laughs) We are have to sort of whilst I don't need to oversee everything and she doesn't oversee marketing it's still important that we're both aware and we are we understand what's going on within the business totally yeah and that's that's super important so then also you touched on having a clear ideal customer that you work with I I mean as a marketer I love this and I'm so grateful that you said that because yes we all start out and we're like but I can help so many types of people yes Yes, you can, but your marketing will not work if you focus on all types of people. It's just if you aim for everyone, you reach no one. It's really important with your marketing to have one clear, specific, ideal customer that you focus on. You tailor all your content to them. And then when people read it, any of your marketing it comes across in any way, they're like, oh, wow, this is really clear who this is for. And even if they're not that one person, it still works for them because you are a strong person. They can see the strength of your business and that you can solve their problems and that's the power of having an ICA. I literally have this discussion nearly daily in my business accelerator program or just talking marketing with people. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know that that works for some people, but for me, it's like, no, 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 no. If you have a business, you must have an ideal customer avatar, one. What differences have you seen in your business since really embracing that philosophy, Em? I think we've just been more specific about what we attend and how we market and we're getting a lot more traction with our marketing. I find people love to see us as well because I think we're the in, in a business where it's service and we're the, we're the difference um, and we're that point of difference. So getting that across has been, been good. But, yeah, finding our ICA, that's something we're still working on and we're getting stronger and stronger every day. And, and as we do, we are... Hitting, hitting them more more with the customers that we want to deal with. But it's still a work in progress, I have to be honest, just because who we speak to is such a broad, broad spectrum of people. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting process. And by having that there, it really helps you to then go, okay, so, you know, where are they hanging out before or after they see me? So that's why you're able to go to certain networking events that you know where your ICA will be. Or in that case, also looking at strategic partnership opportunities. Who are other business owners that I can connect with where my dream client is going to before or after seeing me? How can we both help this person, And you know, if we're non-competing? Now, we only went through two of the things you wish you knew before you started. Did you have any more you wanted to share? I suppose the other one was just speaking to people, just speaking to, to other business owners, getting advice and just really calling upon the support 
of the business community and the professionals mm-hmm. within it to sort of help you and guide you through it. I wish we'd had probably more conversations with business owners and you, and you have to, and, and to understand that success doesn't happen overnight. I think when you go into it, it's so exciting and you're so excited and, you know, you just think this is going to be awesome, but sometimes it can be a <laughs> slow burn or take a bit longer than you thought. And I, and I wish I'd had more conversations with business owners to really understand that a bit more Mm. I think if we knew all the challenges that we'd be faced with before we launched we probably wouldn't have launched Um, (laughs) so it's really a good thing that most of us go into it quite I mean you can't know what you don't know and you know your business only grows as much as you do so it's a constant growth it's that journey it really is running a business is really a journey I love it everyone I've spoken to since though no one whilst it's been hard and they've all spoken about challenges no one's ever regretted their decision to do it and I think that one of the things that you go okay it's worth it no one's saying it's not so that's a positive I like to think that and sometimes I make decisions based on this you know when I'm and my number my death number is 200 and yes with the current rate of technology and the way biohacking is going people in our age group will be dying when they're around 150 to 200 so anyway my number is 200 and I think about when I'm on my deathbed I'm about to die you know I'm 198 199 and I'm thinking back on my life Am I going to regret not doing this or will I regret having done it? And it's those things that we don't do that we regret rather than things we do do. And this might seem off topic, but I love this. I'm I'm always full of cheesy quotes and things. And this one I love is, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything and, and how you bring like that attitude you bring to exercise is the attitude you bring to life. So I think about, well, okay, with exercise, you never, ever, ever regret doing it. After an epic workout or, or even just going for a walk, you never go, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. You know, but it's more like there's things we don't do that we wish we had. So, yeah, maybe I wouldn't have launched if I knew what would have been going on, but I'm so glad I did because uh, the growth, you just don't get it in any other form. But I love that you mentioned about connecting with other business owners because some of the greatest information I learned is from other business owners. And that's also why I created the Inspired Women group was, you know, let's fast track our growth. If there's other, well, there are other mortgage brokers in the group. That's brilliant. Well, not just brokers, but lenders in the group. And it's like for you, you can go and chat with them and be like, hey, well, this is what's worked for me. This is what really bombed. And I think for these reasons, avoid that. Maybe try this. This is where I get my most success. And um, then together, everyone's succeeding much faster and we can learn from each other's mistakes because I know it's the conversations I have with certain entrepreneurial friends that really make a big difference in my business and the decisions I I make. And conversations don't always just have to be one-on-one either. It can be, if you're you're up-leveling your circle of influence, it can be from podcasts and books that you read and other experts and professionals that you're learning from. So I think you know, those conversations are really powerful and so, so phenomenal at helping propel your business. Couldn't Mm. agree more. And yeah, success doesn't happen overnight. It's interesting, like I see, because I work with a lot of people who are earlier in their business or a couple of years in, and just having that consistency for a year where I see the women get to within a year and then they come and they're like, oh, you know, they've got different challenges, but that shift I see them, I'm like, yeah, well, last time we worked together, you know, you were struggling to get clients. This is where you're at. But that consistency over a year, it's like now the next struggle isn't getting clients anymore. It's like, okay, I'm really honing my marketing on this. And now I really want to be focusing on um, getting premises or moving and, and doing this. And it's like, remember a year ago and it felt felt like it was never going to happen. And I think sometimes we don't stop to appreciate how far we've come. I do agree with that. Moments pass us by sometimes and me and Nat are like, wow, we should have probably celebrated that a little bit more because we've come such a long way. I mean, even just working in an office two days a week was such a huge achievement for us. And we were sat there like, wow, we we should probably go out and have dinner or do something to celebrate that we've come this far. But yeah, I think you're right. Celebrating success is something that you have to do, make time for. Definitely. Absolutely. So speaking of our community and connecting and speaking with other people, uh, what is it that you love best? You've been a super active member even on our Inspired Women Events Committee. What is it that you love best about being involved in our community? I think it's like you say, talking to the other women and collaborating with them and having the support there that you can ask questions or how did that work and the, and the real raw honesty 
that that is within the group. I think for us, it's just me and Natalie, it's just the two of us. We were working in a corporate environment before and sometimes we miss that interaction and having other people's opinions and views and trials and tribulations. So it's really nice to come together with a group of women who are supportive and, and just spend time with them, get to know them and their businesses and just be honest and say, sometimes this does suck, but other times it's really awesome. And, and then conversations, I just think it's nice to have. Yeah, definitely. But genuinely, I like the raw honesty. I think we definitely have a lot of that in there, which is really, really I think, cool. I think and some men are scared to say that sometimes that this didn't work, but this did. And, and I think as women, we, we can own that. And, and I like that because life isn't always perfect. And it's nice to have honest conversations. Yeah, and I think it helps build. It's like you open that Jahari window. It's where when one person is open and vulnerable, then it enables other people to be open and vulnerable too. And I think with the community, because it's really been built around that premise, instead of coming in and being like, oh, I have to pretend like I've got my stuff together and I've got it all sorted, it's like you can be honest and raw because these are your friends and they become your clients and they know that you're not perfect. And it's funny, I've got um, a client who's working with a friend who the client, she's a client of her as well. And it's funny because she's a coach. So while she's her client, she's also sort of coaching her on the way. She's like, come on, babe, get this sorted. Do it now. And yet she's the client. So it's, it's really awesome <laughs> to see you've got that honesty and vulnerability of like, yeah, I'm delivering a service to you and I'm not perfect and that's okay. Like I think it, it builds that greater trust and rapport, particularly in this day and age of all the fakeness on social media, the highlight reels. It's like, well, that's not reality. Not at all. <laughs> um, now we did speak earlier about ideal customer avatar and potential strategic partnerships are there any particular businesses you'd love to connect with who maybe haven't met or might have met before in our group um, maybe for strategic partnerships or collaborations or just generally people you'd like to connect with or could help further yeah I would love to at the moment re meet real estate agents either in the commercial world or the residential world, but any real estate agents would be awesome for us. Right. So real estate agents, get in touch with Em. What's the best way to get hold of you, Em? Or people can learn um, more about you. So they can personal message me. We've got a Facebook page. I've got a website and a phone number. So I can put that in the comments on the bottom of this and anyone can get in touch at any time. And we're business owners, so it's not nine to five. <laughs> and we're always available for a chat. And I, I should also mention that that we get paid by the bank, so our service is free to customers. So yes, um, it doesn't cost you anything to talk to me. Fabulous. Well, that takes away all the barriers to entry, doesn't it? Yeah, there's no cost. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll download this video. It'll take a little bit of time, then I'll upload it to Facebook, and then I'll make sure we get all those details in there. If you want to maybe ping them over to me on a message on Messenger, then I can just copy and paste it straight in once it's live. Awesome. Will do. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time today, Emma. It's been amazing learning more about you and Finance Architects Australia. Thank you very much.